They certainly are. And of course, they've been at it for, you know, better part of a, a century. And it goes all the way back, of course, to old John T. and then his son. And these people, you know, at the beginning of the, of the 20th century, in the early 1900s, were already funding the laboratory at Cold Harbor. It was busy creating new diseases at that time. But they always have wanted to eliminate the majority of the people in the world. And of course, basically all one has to do is read the scriptures and find out, you know, the, the, the rider of the pale horse is going to kill a quarter of the percent, a quarter of the population of the world. I have the writings of Barbara Mark Hubbard, who is deeply involved in Luciferianism, who wrote a book called The Revelation, the Book of Co-Creation. She didn't write it, it was channeled to her by a demonic spirit, which she said, we're going to kill a quarter of the population of the world, but that is not your job. That is ours, my dear, because we are the riders of the pale horse death. And then they have the Earth First Battalion in the military. They've got a whitewash coming out, Men Who Stare at Goats, with George Clooney about it. We'll be right back in one minute with more calls. Dr. Stan Monteith. Do you understand how dark it is? How far down the line we are? How late it is? Coming up, our maximum alert dealing with the troops being deployed all over the United States. What's happening with the flu, your calls, and a lot more. Dr. Stan Monteith of RadioLiberty.com is our guest. A lot of great books and videos, materials available at RadioLiberty.com. We're very thankful for him joining us. I want to get him back up about eugenics in the near future. In fact, Doc, I keep meaning to come out and interview you for a new eugenics film I'm working on. Uh, so we need to set that up. I'm also interviewing Dr. Blaylock for it. Let's uh, talk to Mike in Mass. Mike, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hi, Alex. Hi, Doc. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. That's good. Um, I'm a nursing student in Massachusetts, and uh, I brought up to my dean the first day of classes on the Massachusetts Bill 2020 about the forced uh, inoculations. And um, she told me that, she, well, she advised me that um, it would be wise if I didn't tell the other students uh, about this bill and the effects of it. No, yeah, well, they going. have the bill to for come in your home and forcibly take your children and inoculate you. That's on mainstream news, and you're not supposed to talk about it, though, because in America you're not allowed to? Exactly, but I took the liberty upon myself um, to take the video that was posted on uh, your site um, with the judge yesterday, and um, I went on Facebook, MySpace, Twitter, all those um, globalism websites and used it against them and started spreading the word and I call all Massachusetts residents residents to uh, do the same we have to use this technology but hold on who told you you're not supposed to talk to people uh, the, the dean of my department of the nursing program and you're just not in America you can't talk about what's on the news or what's being debated in the newspaper that's the new freedom that's the freedom but um, I went against her orders as a true patriot does uh, I mean, who are, you know, Dr. Monteith, who are all these people that just gleefully serve evil? Well, unfortunately, a lot of them just want to go along and get along. But they think that, you know, well, if they just go along and, and this is not going to affect them, they don't understand that if they serve these evil forces, eventually they themselves will be destroyed. And uh, I saw Germany. I was a military officer, medical officer. I was in Germany after the Second World War. I saw their cities in rubble. I mean, total destruction of many of the major cities over there because the good people did nothing. And that old adage is so true. All that's necessary for evil to triumph is the good people do nothing. But we have to be involved, and we have to be involved now. And there is a growing awareness across the country. I know you sense it, and I sense it, of the people who are on the front lines of this what's going on sense it and i think a lot of people in the medical profession are up in arms and if they'll just stand together and just say we're not going to do it i would tell you why since i am in the medical profession i get all sorts of things from various government agencies and they're putting on special seminars how are we going to convince the people who are healthcare workers to take this because this vaccine because they don't want to take it how are we going to get them to do something they don't want to do Here's what you do, and they lay out a whole plan for them. Well, doctor, hold on. Uh, you said you could stay. Can you do one more long segment to finish up telling us about that sure. and then take some more calls? Okay. Uh, because, again, I see this more and more as we're winning. People are waking up to vaccines, so they're trying through fear to push it on us. I see this almost as a failing forward or fleeing forward. Doctor? 
I agree with you. I think that this is the greatest issue from our point of view, because now suddenly this is not what's going on over in Iraq. This is not the genocide that's being carried out over in Africa. This is going to affect people in this country. And you know, there's nothing that gets your attention more than when your own ox gets gored. And I think a lot of health care workers are going to be up in arms about this. And I'm just... Oh, they are. I've got an article about big demonstrations forming around the country of health care workers. Anything else, Mike and Mass? Yeah, I just wanted to end with, um, if they do pass this bill in Massachusetts and police officers do house to house or business to business, uh, there will be, um, you could say, a second shot heard around the world that referring to uh, the original American Revolution. Yeah, well, that's the thing. If 1% of citizens don't take the shot and fight back... That's uh, three million people firing weapons at police. We don't want this to happen because the new order wants to start this war. And I hope police and military know they're being marched in up against the spirit of 1776. And they're going to be crushed. But that's part of the plan. I'll explain when we get back. Everything we said came true. Everything we've done has been right. right. Dr. Monteith, we're going to continue with phone calls. But I wanted to ask you, if we know Bayer and Baxter knowingly shipped out HIV, hepatitis blood in their own documents in court, MSNBC's reported it, knowing it would kill the hemophiliacs and others that took the Factor Eight product. This was basically a matter of eugenics. You see, wouldn't the world, if you are a eugenicist uh, who believe in eugenics, wouldn't the world be better off if there weren't any hemophiliacs because then we wouldn't have the disease. They set out to kill the hemophiliacs. They killed almost half of them in the United States. They shipped Factor Eight that they knew would kill the hemophiliacs to Canada, uh, to France. Well, I want Japan. you to elaborate on that, but just to finish the full question. If we know they did that and other companies have done thousands of other things, why do we then trust any vaccines they come out with, anything they say? Bayer worked with Hitler. It's all these companies... I mean, it's so elementary, and then they admit this flu isn't dangerous. Uh, very, I mean, compared to regular flu, 30-some percent of people already have it, didn't even get sick. I mean, just how we, I mean, how is it, why aren't people waking up quicker? Well, what we need to do is simply keep talking and talking about it. I'm mean, sure you're well aware of the fact that Baxter said, you know, batches, a massive batch of, of it, of influenza vaccine to Europe that actually contains the deadly H1N5 or H5N1 or avian flu virus. Our bodies would fight this off if we don't get infected by it unless they inject it into you. And they were going to give it to millions of people if it hadn't been for the Czechoslovakians who tested the vaccine before it was given and found it killed all the ferrets and then checked the vaccine. They would have killed millions of people. And I'm talking within the last several months this happened and baxter said oh gee we just have no idea how the deadly virus got in our flu vaccine let me ask so you this it for a minute this let me is ask why you. i think that we're moving towards the climax in history that would have been the greatest uh, criminal act of all time would have dwarfed anything that adolf hitler ever did and we would have heard on the news that it was a muted mutated bird flu killing everybody and we would have never known it was baxter but by the Which, grace of god a lab technician discovered it and basically uh this this was in the last couple of months and anybody can check these facts out fortunately we have access to the internet and you can go to your search engine and simply put in baxter uh the avian flu virus and it was put into the into a flu vaccine well when they would do that and i mean they should have immediately arrested the people from Baxter and put them in prison. We're talking about the attempt to kill millions of people. Well, let me go further, Doctor. Then it came out in the London Telegraph that of 100 homeless that were given this shot, a bird flu vaccine, and told that it was regular flu vaccine, the city, one city in Poland paid them. This happened all over Europe. 21 of the 100 that were tested died. So this is a deadly weapon. And then no one from the vaccine makers got in trouble. They arrested the city officials. Well, I think it's about time the American people do. I, I, I honestly believe that the one that they're going to give in Europe is going to be much more deadly than the one they give here in the United States. But I'm not certain of that, and you shouldn't take it anyway because it contains mercury.
mercury, but you do not know what is in this. I mean, we can go back to the history of vaccines. We can start back, certainly, back in 1942 when they gave our military a yellow fever vaccine, but they forgot to test it ahead of time, and of course, uh, they got yellow jaundice because it had a hepatitis B. Uh, and actually about 300,000 American troops uh, uh, got the virus. Fortunately, only about 28,000 came down with the disease, and I don't oh. know how many of them died. But uh, and Only 28,000 had their liver eaten. How nice of the government. But what people do not know, and this is one of the most carefully kept secrets of modern times, is that there are, and you can go to the World Health Organization website and get the information. 